No silly intro this week, no ridiculous skit with myth. I can't treat this game that way. It's a serious game on a serious topic, and attempting to treat this game with the level of levity that I usually come at my reviews with will result in a realization very similar to the one that I had when I started this game blind for the first time. But he, no, I'm but he can't talk. It's true. <laughs> yeah. You always can talk. Yeah. Not always. Why can't Joel? Well, because he's a failure. Joel got sick right after he turned one. And... Oh, now I feel way worse about saying that. <laughs> in my defense in that clip, I was not told what that dragon cancer was when I went into it. And I, like all games that are requested of me, I try to go into them fairly blind overall to get the most unique and fresh experience that I can. I knew that I had heard the game's name before in regards to walking simulators, but that was really all that I knew. So for those of you not familiar with what a walking simulator is, it's a genre of game in which you can only move and interact with objects. There is no combat, no true choice, and you are simply moving through a world and having limited interactions with it. You might say this sounds incredibly boring, and many would agree with you. As someone who loves a well-told story, I would disagree. If used correctly, a walking simulator can let you live a story in a way no other medium can. Luckily, that dragon cancer has several beautiful moments that demonstrate this fact perfectly. It used the medium of an interactive story to help the player experience the world in a truly unique way. The best example of this came about two-thirds of the way through the story, so I must set the scene. That Dragon Cancer is the true story about a child named Joel Green and his struggle against cancer. It was written by his parents, and you can feel every bit of weight behind their words, even if their writing abilities aren't always the best, but we'll come back to that. You are introduced to Joel and his plight. You see his parents hope how much is being done for him, but it's cancer. There are far less happy stories than tragic. He enters remission, and the last third of the game is focused on those around him trying to hold on to hope and faith during his descent. It is understandably tragic, and each of the parents handled the situation in their own way. At one point, you find yourself controlling Joel's father, back in the tiny hospital room that you've been in several times before. Beside your chair stands Joel's crib, and while you can't see him, his cries of pain and misery ring through your ears. Even beyond being depressing, a baby crying is incredibly unpleasant to listen to, so the player wants to find the trigger to progress the story as fast as possible. You get out of the chair, you go back and forth across the tiny room looking for something to interact with. Several times you hear the father speak, relaying his inner thoughts in this moment, begging for Joel to stop crying, for God to do something, for his son to just stop hurting. Nothing truly advances, though. You sit down in the chair, you get back up and work your way back and forth across this tiny room several more times. Why can't you just make the crying stop? Where is the trigger to move on? And then it clicked for me. I was the father, pacing this tiny room, wanting the crying to stop so desperately and yet being completely unable to do so. It had spoken to me in a way that only this medium of art can. A book could tell me how he paced, what he was thinking. A movie could show me him pacing, let me hear him thinking. But only a game could let me experience it for myself in some infinitesimal fraction of what he had himself. And I could feel it cut into my heart in the way that only a piece of art like this can. There were several more moments like this, but I truly feel that you should experience them for yourself. The impact and realization that each carries cannot be expressed without playing it yourself. Now, this wouldn't be an otter review if I didn't criticize. So let's start with the little criticisms. The writing can be a little bit convoluted sometimes. One perfect example of this is at the start of the game. Remember that little moment from the opening? You always can talk. Not always. 
Why can't Joel? Well, this moment is only a few moments later in transition between moments. Yeah. Maybe the sweet was a daily affection. And bye bye. No kid and likes bye bye. Kisses. Be real. And more. Oh. Always more. This full list of words. Excuse me, you just said he can't so talk. Few. You just said he can't talk. So, can Joel speak, or can't he? And I know why things like this happen. To the parents, he couldn't talk. But Joel is also in their memory at the moment he died. So he both has a vocabulary and doesn't. He both cries like a baby and is five years old. Everyone does things like this. We're just the ones doing it so we don't notice. Thus, I can't complain very much about the inconsistency. I may call it out, but it's hard to focus on in a story where you hear the love coming in through in their voices. What I can complain much more about are the religious platitudes being shoved at you in this game. Before I say any more, I will open with this. I am a Christian. I am not coming at this from the point of view of another faith or atheism. But with that said, if you are in another faith, or particularly if you are an atheist who dislikes religion, or if you dislike the simple platitudes of any given religion, especially when you feel like they're being shoved at you, I don't care how much you care about cancer, don't pick up this game. After the halfway mark, when you find out Joel has relapsed, it will kill any goodwill you have for the game and leave you with a cynical, bitter taste in your mouth. Donate your $10 you would have spent on the game directly to a charity, but give the game a pass. Even as a Christian, I still felt my happiness with the game draining away, though. The writing was so full of easy platitudes and trite explanations and pointless, blind belief that God will actively intervene in this single child's life that you could be forgiven for thinking it was written by James Dobson. Alright, so it's true that I'm a fairly cynical Christian, but this message still really should have spoken to me. But the religious message of being thrown in your faith actively destroyed a lot of what I so loved about the game. This is not to say it still didn't have excellent moments. Both the realization moment that I described and one of the others will come deep into the platitudes. But that is the difference. You can tell if a moment will be meaningful or truly moving based off of which parent you're with. Are you with the mother? Brace yourself for more forced optimism, meaningless platitudes, and meaninglessly cheerful prayers. Are you with the father? Prepare to feel your heart cry. I do understand that this is both parents' way of expressing their grief, and I do not want to and cannot take that away from them. That is not my intention in these criticisms. That is always the danger with writing your own experiences, though. No matter how I criticize, I have to emphasize that I am impressed with them to have made this game. It had to take a lot for them to face their grief and remember their son like this. This isn't my usual criticism, where I'm encouraging the developer to do better. This is here for those in my audience who would hate the game over these problems in the experience to know why they should avoid this game that I am otherwise advising everyone play. Yes, everyone should play this if they can stomach my complaints. What they should not do is insult the parents for selling this game. Yeah, that's seriously something people are doing. Apparently, there is a small but highly vocal part of the world that feels they are trying to capitalize off the death of their son. That the game should be free. I right, listen up, you dandruff brain clods. First, at least a portion of the cost is being given to cancer charity. Oh, I but it all should be. I don't know what wonderland you're living in, but games don't get made for free. You sit there and put up with AAA publishers telling you they need microtransactions and digital deluxe editions and glorified gambling and immeasurable amounts of DLC that may or may not be covered by a season pass, and yet you think that dragon cancer, a game with more depth, heart, and beauty than any AAA game I've played yet for this show, should put none of the profits towards development? Breathe in deep, smell that faint waft of eggs. That's your colon, you incompetent malcontent. And even if all of the money from the sales of that dragon cancer went to the family, so what? Newsflash, guys. Cancer is expensive. 
This seems like a genuine, loving family from everything both within the game and that I could find outside of the game. They did everything possible to care for not only their sick son, they didn't deny him any treatments so that God will do it, they did their best to take care of him, but also tried to make sure that their other two sons were well cared for and not neglected. That's right, they have two other kids. So even if every single penny from that dragon cancer went right into their pockets, they're probably still deeply in debt from trying to care for their sick son. <sighs> okay, rant over. Sorry. I know that I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but it needed to be said, especially in case any of those idiots ever see this show. <laughs> People seeing this show. Yeah. Um, so, I would say that you should keep my criticisms in mind going into the game, and if they're an absolute deal-breaker for you, then you are the only ones that I would say should not play the game. You won't get anything positive out of it overall. But for everyone to whom it's not an absolute deal-breaker, this is something that you should play. Just as surely as everyone should see the Mona Lisa. Just as surely as everyone should read To Kill a Mockingbird. This game proved that games are artwork, or at least can be artwork, just as much as any book can be artwork, or movie, or painting can be. Sure, they won't all be high art, but they can be. <laughs>